today we will see the uh, one interesting topic common emitter amplifier common emitter that is ce defines common emitter configuration so emitter is going to be a common and base is going to be input and collector is going to be a output so interesting future of common emitter already we discussed in the previous lecture why most of the configuration application we are preferring the common emitter configuration why not other configuration we have discussed in the earlier classes and amplifier what is your amplifier so amplifier in the sense your magnitude of your output will be raised if you compare with the input this is basically what amplifier does right when you go for here you can see the main block that is signal source dc voltage source amplifier and load load for example i am saying it is a speaker that means input will be some microphone or something cd player anything so input will have a input ranges will be in terms of millivolt your your load in terms of voltage consider like that so in between you have amplifier in amplifier generally have with your active components like you will be having bjt fed mosfet so this amplifying device it is amplifying device how in the transistor you want to do the dc biasing so the purpose of dc biasing is to fix the quotient point and to convert the energy and will be added that is superimposed with your ac signal so dc power will be added with your signal it is like a carrier so it it helps to increase the magnitude of the signal based on the arrangement of the circuit and the element what you are connected that is a resistor capacitors so that everything is comes belong to that so based on that drop only measured so here main intention is your low signal to be amplified into the high signal power the low in the sense in terms of millivolt high in the sense in terms of volt that's it so this is a concept is used for many application okay this block is a basic thing this will be used in the many application like what i mentioned here you can see it is used for the like a like a electrocardiograph and orbiting weather satellite and like a, in most of the application this is a basic block okay so now if you want to understand the amplifier you want to understand the frequency response it is very important when you see the frequency response you it is determined with the three frequencies one is a low mid and higher frequency see every frequency response have certain impedance with respect to the signal where a source is coming the capacitor offering different impedance with respect to the frequency so it is classified into mid low and high so when you see the mid frequency the gain is saturated you can see moreover the gain whatever you are seeing it's almost saturated that means sir uh, your gain uh, uh, that signal which is coming in this bandwidth you almost you have a constant without a variation but when you see the low frequency part the signal was reducing gain was reducing because the impedance is offering more because of your external capacitance i am not going in depth just i am saying why this gain a dip is coming because of the external capacitor which is connected in the circuit but when you see here this in the higher frequency also there is a dip this is due to the internal thing internal capacitance between the junction we have a two junction so we, i think you are familiar uh, like a your uh, like a, what is the design of your transistor the transistor is nothing but a back to back two diodes so one junction between base emitter another junction between the base collector so in between the two junction you have a capacitance effect that is a material based those capacitance will come to the picture and it will give the impedance based in the higher frequency part it will not work in the lower frequency it will dominantly work in the higher frequency only so it will be parallel to the junction that is a very important this will be parallel to the junction okay so here you can, here i you concluded that the this low frequency dip because of the external capacitor and higher frequency gain dip because of the internal frequency that is a conclusion what here here and the high in the mid band you can see the gain is almost constant right almost constant without any variation and we can see the over the 3 db they have taken so consider is a 40 db they have taken like a from minus 30 so db because during this 3 db only your gain the like a gain of your signal is almost constant the the variation of in this period is very very less 
okay so almost you can see uh, this is a very in depth topic i am not going in depth to that so in that uh, like a, if, when you take a 3 db value the power will be off okay 1 by 2 power will be measured in the 3 db value okay so bandwidth is a uh, very important technical term when you are speaking amplifier so it is a range that we as we will say used to lay, say like fh minus fl what is mean by fh minus fl so it is a range of frequencies at which your gain is almost constant with a little variation okay so that is a bandwidth actually okay so that is higher frequency minus lower frequency but in this region only your almost your gain is almost constant without any variation so another thing if you look at the amplifier feedback part positive feedback and negative feedback when you see amplifier you want to understand we are using the negative feedback many students have doubt why we are not taking a positive feedback to the amplifier circuit certainly you have the reason is when you bring the positive feedback gain is almost good no doubt but noise also will be incorporated along with your fundamental frequency so but amplifier the device don't know right so the along with the fundamental frequency noise also will be added those signal also will be amplified and signal will be corrupted so it will not output will not be same as what we expected when you use a positive feedback gain is more no doubt in that but stability wise bandwidth wise very less when you go for the positive feedback because of the noise see when you want to design the linear amplifier you want to compromise the gain the gain you can almost you can you can compromise you can keep some threshold but bandwidth we can't compromise is a needed parameter when you go for the amplifier part so that is a reason why we need to go for the negative feedback in the negative feedback the noise signal will be cancelled out so that the original signal only will be amplified by your uh, the device amplifier device and the noise signal will be cancelled out so that is a reason why we are looking for the negative feedback in the most of the amplifier circuit here you can see the circuit uh, shown here This is a voltage divided by biasing circuit. This is a DC supply. You can see the DC supply is given here, and the drop across this R2 will forward by this junction. This is a bypass capacitor. This is a input coupling. This is output coupling capacitor. This is a load resistor, and you can see the signal I give only five millivolt. The reason you know, if I am giving one volt or two volt, it will go beyond your if amplifier signal will go beyond your uh, DC input. Okay, so it should not uh, go. If it go above your DC signal, it will affect your signal. Okay, you will not get the pure linear signal. You will be getting a distorted signal. You may get, you may apply a sine, but you may get a square. The reason is some part of the signal is clipped out because of applying the higher signal. You should give the low input because this type of can act able to and able to handle only the uh, low. signal power okay and also you can see this uh, i have given the one uh, model for the transistor i have not used some reserved uh, model from the software i have used npn one i have named user defined so what is the thing here is one thing you want to observe here the saturation current almost you know that is a reverse saturation current minus 40 to 80 and beta factor is 200 and capacitance between the base and emitter is 20 picofarad and capacitance between the collector and base is 20 picofarad okay this if you not included in this model you will not get the response in the higher frequency side see you want to remember the frequency response i said clearly the dip which is coming in the higher frequency because of the incorporating the internal junction capacitance this internal junction capacitance are here it is given as a 10 picofarad and 20 for the Uh, emitter junction 20 for collector junction this 20 picofarad so when you are writing the command it is must to include this junction capacitance otherwise you will not get the higher frequency response in your frequency response uh, of your uh, circuit okay that is very important so here uh, we can see i have given the dc analysis also 
Okay, I have the DC analysis. I have, I have checked, cross-check with your obtained uh, output also. See, almost uh, I have got the same. The RBH I have calculated, VTH I have calculated, IB, IC, VCE, VC, VE, and VB. Almost I have calculated. This formulas I am not going to explain. So this formulas already we have defined in the classes and in our uh, again numericals. Right, so this is the base resistance uh, like uh, R1 into R2 dot by R1 plus R2 while we are replacing your uh, converse circuit into the uh, like a uh, equalized model with your thevenons, we will be getting this formulas, right, similarly VTH. Then IB is a base current that is VBB minus VBE base emitter voltage divided by RB plus 1 plus beta into RE. So IC equal to beta times of IB and VC. So when you apply the cable in the outermost side, you will be getting this all equation or almost. Okay, so just you want to plug in the given values, you will be getting the corresponding answer. You can see the IB is 1.15, right? So 1.15. So what is the value I have obtained here? This 1.13 10 to the power minus 5. See, almost same, right? Very little variation. And I see this 2.31 milliamps, and you can see it was 2.2. 267 milliamps. See, almost same I got. The reason is the beta value I have given 200. In my my own model also I given 200. If you take uh, some other uh, some defined model, you don't know what is the beta value. This problem might be having uh, some different beta value. So answer will be mismatch. So that is the reason why we want to design a own model with your own command. Okay, so we can see the corresponding values. All are almost uh, matching. Can see your VC uh, like a 6.94 here you get 7.01 and uh, V 1.31 here you can see 1.27 so almost you will get same okay now we will go to the uh, LT space here the input uh, given is 5 millivolt right 5 millivolt I have given and uh, 1 kilohertz is your frequency and, uh, I, and we are interested to do the small signal analysis you want to give the amplitude 1 and uh, this internal uh, Sorry, this is a uh, coupling capacitor 10 microfarad, 3.3 microfarad is output coupling capacitor and load resistor 820 and DC biasing is 12. And here you want to do the node. Some students will miss this node. Unless if you are not doing this node, it will not work as a divider biasing. And it is a bypassed capacitor. Okay, so in the DC analysis, uh, this capacitor will not work only in the AC analysis this capacitor will work right so another thing you want to observe here is I have not used some reserve transistor I have designed one model and the command which I have give, uh, given here is mod, dot model npn1 what is npn1 is your own name you can give any name the npn is a reserved command so here you can't change this npn it's a reserved uh, name and saturation current I can vary from minus 14 to minus 18 and beta factor I have given 200 and uh, emitter that is a base emitter junction to 20 picofarad and uh, collector uh, junction I have given 20 picofarad okay so this is very important okay so if you do not include this you will not get the higher frequency response okay so now we will go for the simulation I think you can uh, design the same circuit okay you will not face any issues okay so don't forget the ground always important to close the full circuit okay complete the circuit okay so when you go for the uh, DC analysis okay I have just given the DC analysis I just run so you can see I am I am getting the VC, B, VB and IC, IV, I, so we will be getting so why I am getting because I have given the names, right? I give the label that so I am getting exactly in the uh, in the summation, right? So it will not confuse. If you are not giving now, it will be random. So that is uh, 0, 0, 001, 0, 0, 002 something. So you want to give the label that. So that will uh, easy to trace, okay? That will help you to uh, identify easily. So collector current, base current, uh, whatever you obtained here, same uh, we have checked in the theoretical. So we have got same values, right? So that means our values are good, correct. So now we will go for the for AC analysis, right? Okay. So now, 
so we will give like a 10 milliseconds okay so this is your input so you can see you can see the red marker red mark means it will measure the voltage see ball that uh, black marker it will measure the current okay very important okay so it, what you can do is we can another you can add add plot plane and you getting another one and we can see the output okay so you can see uh, 5 millivolt is input and output is 20 uh, millivolt so you can see the range of amplifier right so amplification was good right so you can see the phase shift also it's happened in the common emitter amplifier okay so so this is about the amplification so amplification part over now we'll go for the frequency response so when you go for the frequency response just keep a decade okay so number of points decade is 10 and start frequency you can take it as 1 and and uh, stop frequency just uh, 100 megahertz okay i just ran so if you see the frequency response see you're getting a full response right so maximum is 35 db so i'm not interested to plot a non phase okay let's remove it so i get uh, like an x axis frequency and y axis was gain so you can see the response okay based on circuit the response will be varying so you can see you got the higher frequency response for my own model no, this is not a resolved transistor i have designed my own model right so for example if i am removing this for example you consider i am removing this okay okay how you see Unrun. So if you run, okay. So you can see you're not getting the response in the higher frequency because I'm not included in my own model. So it is a must if you do if you take a, a one model, it is mandatory to add the internal capacitance. Otherwise, you will not get this higher frequency part. If you if you are taking like a resort model, no problem because in in uh, invent they will be giving those values. But if you are defining your own model, you want to add otherwise you want the higher frequency part. 